Minister, this Saturday at one o'clock uh, in Parnell Square, I hope and expect that there will be tens of thousands of people uh, assembling to march in solidarity with the people of Gaza and Palestine as, a, as they face the horror that is being inflicted on them by the State of Israel. And one of the questions they are going to be a asking, and I'm asking you, is how many Palestinians does Israel have to massacre? How many atrocities do they have to commit? How much evidence do you need that Israel is engaged in a genocidal attack on the people of Gaza and increasingly people in the West Bank before you will do something, before you will take any action whatsoever to sanction uh, this murderous regime for the slaughter it is inflicting on thousands and thousands uh, of Palestinians. On the 18th of October, you, you had a motion, the government had a motion, talking about Israel's right to self-defence. At the time, we put forward a motion and argued that Israel was not engaged in anything to do with self-defence, but it was continuing and accelerating a genocidal attack to reinforce its system of apartheid, its system of occupation, and its ongoing war crimes and ethnic cleansing uh, of the Palestinian people. Uh, we called at the time for the expulsion of the ambassador, for the prosecution of Israel for war crimes, uh, and for other sanctions. At that time, we got seven votes. Seven votes. Uh, last night, 55 deputies in here voted to expel the Israeli ambassador, to sanction Israel, to refer them uh, for war crimes and for genocide, but still you voted against. Now, could you please explain to me what level of atrocity Israel has to commit, how many babies they have to murder, how many hospitals they have to bomb, how many houses they have to bomb, how many people they have to ethnically cleanse before you think it will be time to impose the sort of sanctions that you were very quick to impose uh, on Russia for Putin's uh, invasion of Ukraine. Are Palestinian babies and lives less valuable than those of Ukrainians that you don't feel it is justified in the face of this slaughter uh, to sanction them for the crimes they are uh, committing? Please explain to me and to the thousands who are, have been on the streets and who will be on the streets again this Saturday how you can justify inaction in the face of slaughter and massacre. Minister, please. And look, we can all agree that the, the scenes we are witnessing on television and on our social media feeds are simply shocking. I find it very hard to watch the news these days, to be frank with you. Uh, tomorrow is the ninth birthday of Emily Hand, a beautiful young child uh, who is being held captive, we believe, uh, by Hamas in Gaza. Uh, our is uh, in the Middle East, as you know, right now. Uh, putting in the hard yards and the hard work of international diplomacy, uh, trying to make progress in securing uh, the passage of the remaining Irish citizens who are in Gaza, uh, and also advocating for peace and having many difficult conversations with those that he needs to talk to on behalf of the Irish government to advocate for peace uh, and to advocate uh, for a ceasefire because the humanitarian situation that we are witnessing in Gaza uh, is simply mm -hmm. appalling. Uh, Israel has a right to defend itself. Uh, what Hamas did on the 7th of October is unspeakable. And the Taunish is witnessing and visiting some of the sites where those massacres by Hamas took place. But Israel, in defending itself, uh, ha has to act in accordance with international humanitarian law. And Ireland has been very consistent and very clear, the Taoiseach, uh, the Taunish, the entire government uh, in relation to that. And on the cause that we should expel the Israeli ambassador, you know, international diplomacy and maintaining channels of communication uh, is not about staying close to your friends or about endorsing policies. 
It's about keeping channels open for when you need them. And we need them because in trying to secure the safe access out of Gaza of the remaining our citizens there, and in trying to be heard in advocating for peace, it's important that we continue to communicate and we continue to have dialogue uh, with all of those in the region. And we've about 400 peacekeepers, Irish men and women uh, in the region. So Ireland has to maintain diplomatic relations uh, with Israel. Uh, but we also uh, will call out, when we see it, uh, uh, the, uh, the level of force that has been used, in our view, is completely disproportionate. Uh, civilians should be protected. Uh, Gaza and Hamas are not the same thing. The civilians in Gaza should not be the subject of collective punishment uh, by the Israeli Defence Force. So Ireland is an important actor. We have a voice. We are being listened to. And I believe that our Tánishta, uh, who is there at the moment, deserves the steadfast and the fulsome support of everyone in this House in what he is seeking to achieve. Advocating for peace, uh, trying to secure the release of all the hostages, the secure passage of the remaining Irish uh, citizens from Gaza uh, through the Rafa crossing uh, into Egypt. And he's having those difficult conversations right now in the Middle East. You see, you're still talking about uh, Israel's uh, self-defence. Apartheid, because that's what the Israeli system is, doesn't have a right to defend itself any more than apartheid South Africa did. Illegal occupation doesn't have the right to defend itself. Ethnic cleansing or a state built on ethnic cleansing doesn't have a right to defend itself. The people who have the right to defend themselves are the people who are victims of those things. Who are the victims? Who are the oppressed here? The Palestinians are. They're the ones being ethnically cleansed. They're the people at the wrong end of apartheid. They're the ones under illegal occupation. They're the ones who've been killed uh, with impunity for years and years and years. They've been killed on the West Bank, but there's no Hamas. Why do you continue to peddle the notion that Israel is interested in peace? What everything is doing is making it clear it's involved in massive terrorist ethnic cleansing to drive the Palestinians out of Gaza, out of the West Bank, to expand the borders of Israel, as it's been doing every single year since 1948. When is the world going to wake up with this? And you didn't answer me. Why did you impose, even setting aside the ambassador, why sanctions on Putin for his war crimes, but nothing, no sanction whatsoever, ever, ever imposed on Israel, even when they're slaughtering thousands and thousands of children? Deputy, please. Minister. Uh, thanks, Deputy. Um, the government is supporting the people of Palestine. We are providing funding. Uh, this week, the government announced additional funding as well for the International Criminal Court. Uh, the Tarnished announced 13 million euro in funding in humanitarian assistance to the Palestinian people, uh, with uh, 10 million to UNRWA and 3 million for the UN OCHA. So we are providing direct practical support for the people of Palestine. And we've been very clear uh, in what we have been calling for for some time now. And we are seeing more and more EU countries uh, and other jurisdictions uh, coming to the view that Ireland has been espousing, that there should be a, a complete and immediate humanitarian ceasefire. The gun should stop and the bomb should stop. The only way ultimately to achieve peace here is through dialogue. We know all about this on our own island, Deputy. We know our history. And Ireland is a respected voice uh, on this issue because of our own historical experience on this island. So we are continuing to work through all of those channels. Uh, we are glad that 23 Irish citizens uh, uh, left Gaza yesterday through the Rafa crossing. Uh, we expect that more will be in a position uh, to do so today. Uh, we want to see the release of all the hostages, uh, including uh, little Emily Hand and all of the others.